Paul, what can philosophy of biology bring to some of the new hot topics in human society, particularly transhumanism and artificial intelligence? These are two factors, particularly artificial intelligence today, that is so dominating how we see our future. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, what kinds of, of ways to think about those things to based on the historical approach that philosophy of biology is used to elucidate evolution and other kinds of issues? Well, I think the key thing here is that opposition to transhumanism is often focused on the idea of human nature, that there is a human nature and that transcending it is only going to be a bad thing, right? And that's traditionally been because human nature is thought of as something essential and inside us that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I take pretty much the opposite view of human nature. I think that human beings are best understood as a developmental system that involves both biology and culture, that it's very flexible, that it has a, an open-ended capacity to generate human diversity that we won't understand until you know, we've basically added the last chapter to both biology and psychology. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's going to be a long time before mm -hmm. we really understand the full potential of human nature to generate many different ways of being. But oddly enough, even though I have that very open and flexible view of human nature, it makes me quite worried about the idea that we should try to transcend the human. Because I think of a human being as a, a life cycle that unfolds in a way that is incredibly dependent on a very rich matrix of cultural resources. And we don't fully understand how those things interfere with development in order to produce good or bad outcomes. Mm -hmm. So for me, the reason for being a little skeptical about the idea that we can make whatever we want of ourselves is that I'm quite sympathetic to the view that human diverse, potential diversity is enormous, but I don't think that getting from A to B can be done by just saying, hey, we want to be at B, let's go there. Mm -hmm. To get to make, take a human being to a different way of being is to interfere with many of the parameters that are required for normal healthy development. And to do that when you have no actually understanding of how the system works is to invite goodness knows how many extraordinary side effects. So what, what you're dealing with though is not a matter of principle against it, it's a, it's a matter of technology or knowledge so that after a period of time, if you really do know the consequences, you're perfectly fine with some transhumanism through genetic engineering or through replacement yeah. of brain parts or whatever, whatever it is. I would be, absolutely. I, I'm simply very much on the skeptical end of believing, for example, that with respect to important human social characteristics, our capacity to uh, knock in a few sequences with CRISPR and get the outcome yeah. we want is like, just don't even think about going there. Mm -hmm. Who knows where you'll end up? Mm -hmm. You might as well just, you know, kick the thing randomly and see what happens, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I'm very skeptical about our capacity to do that in any defensible way. And how does that same argument apply to artificial intelligence, which has, is a de novo situation? It's not human nature, but it's a nature that we're creating, which some people say will hit a singularity, will be more intelligent, more, more sophisticated than, than human thought. Um, how, does it, how does that impact that? So the main thing that that worries me about that is not, uh, I, I don't have particularly uh, serious philosophical views on the singularity issue, but I do worry a lot about our interactions with these new technological environments. I think it's something that we should be monitoring at least as rigorously as we monitor, say, drug side effects. Mm. Uh, so it's becoming, has become, I think, really quite difficult to avoid the conclusion on the basis of the research literature that in the second half of the 20th century, we adopted, we conducted an enormous and incredibly unsuccessful experiment in human psychological development. It was called having leaded petrol in our cars. Okay, <laughs> And it's increasingly clear that a great deal of what were thought of as new social problems and new social developments in the second half of the 20th century, in many different, different time, staggered time intervals in different jurisdictions around the world, were due to basically putting small amounts of lead into the development of all developing children. And this was a really bad idea. Mm -hmm. It had some really bad consequences. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even realize that that was the problem until we kind of accidentally solved it by introducing unleaded petrol, mm -hmm. right? So I think we should be just as concerned about the informational environment that we soak our children in 
as about the chemical environment. Mm -hmm. And that it's worth a, a very large amount of uh, research investment in making sure that if we're going to completely transform the developmental environment of children, that it's taking us to some amazingly great new way of being human and not to some really kind of unfortunate mm -hmm. way of being human. I think this is a topic where you know, government dollars invested in serious research in that area would be very well spent.